Welcome, riders, ridettes, and pillions. I'm Elliot, and you are watching the Van Blam YouTube channel. Today, I am finally riding the much-asked-for Triumph Trident, which I've borrowed from a very nice viewer here in Denver. This bike is brand new for 2021, and it's been getting a lot of attention online. So today, we're gonna find out if it lives up to the hype. So what is the Trident? Well, to put it simply, it's a sporty, middleweight naked bike, which I'm sure you're aware is a very crowded, very competitive segment in motorcycles. But what makes the Trident stand out is its triple cylinder motor. A triple, in theory, splits the difference between a twin cylinder and a four cylinder engine. So what you get with the Trident is a bike with a little bit less low end grunt than a Yamaha MT-07 and a little bit less top end power than a Honda CB650R but a very versatile and well-balanced engine. You're looking at about 80 horsepower and 47 foot-pounds of torque. So we're on the highway now doing 60, low 60s, and we're just under 5,000 RPM, which is not too bad. It's not loud, it's not vibey, it's all metal foot pegs, but I'm not really getting any vibrations in my feet. As you can see, the tachometer is flashing kind of angrily there. Uh, that's because this bike is still in its run-in period. Now, the owner said that he's not strictly adhering to the break-in guidelines from Triumph, but I still am not going to push it too hard on this first ride. So what kind of riding would one do on a Triumph Trident? Well, pretty much any kind of on-road riding with a bias towards moderate sport riding. I think this would be a great choice if you want a single motorcycle to commute on in the city and then take out for a blast in the hills on the weekends. And that's what we're about to do here in Bear Creek, one of my favorite roads here in Colorado. Still getting used to the shifting just a little bit. Yeah, it definitely picks up out of the corners. This bike is not slow by any means, but I'm still finding the power delivery to be very manageable, very linear. And I think that trait, oh nice, C2. I think that trait comes from the triple engine, you know, not quite as torquey as a twin, not quite as revy as a four. This is an extremely approachable bike. Now, I wouldn't recommend that you buy it as your first motorcycle, but that's only because I think everyone should start on a 250. Even if you could get a middleweight and be safe and be okay and not crash, you'd still be better served by spending a year mastering a 250 and then moving on to something bigger. It will make you a better motorcyclist. That said though, I know some people are gonna be interested in a Trident as their first bike, and some of them will go buy one as soon as they get their license. And those people are probably gonna be okay. There we go. Yeah, it's not the torquiest thing in the world. It takes a little minute to rev up if you're starting from below like 4,000 RPM, but it gets there. Here, let's come out of this corner at a lower RPM. Let's, we're in fourth gear here at 4,000. As soon as we get a clear line of sight, we roll on the throttle and it moves. Still in fourth gear, going around this corner. That's 5,000 RPM. Roll on the throttle and it moves. So yeah, well, I think this bike would reward you for keeping the revs high. It's not something that's gonna be totally dead if you come out of a corner one gear too high. Oh my gosh, this is fun. <laughs> this is really fun. So this bike does come with all the onboard safety features and rider aids that we've come to expect from a premium manufacturer in 2021. You get anti-lock brakes, you get traction control, and you get two different rider modes, uh, rain and road. Now the power is the same in both of those modes, but rain mode just has a slightly dulled throttle response and is a little bit more intrusive with the traction control. You would use that one, obviously in conditions where the grip is not ideal, or if you're in like stop and go city traffic, something like that, and use road mode all the rest of the time. I think two modes is plenty. My personal motorcycle, my Speed Twin, has three modes, and I just feel like I'm always trying to come up with an excuse to use each one. This Trident, in my opinion, has just the right level of electronics. It's gonna help keep you safe, but it's not gonna weigh you down with stuff you don't need. Now, the owner of this bike has opted for the, oh gosh, what is it, My Triumph? 
whatever's their Bluetooth connectivity feature that lets you pair your phone with your motorcycle. And then on this TFT dash, you can run things like navigation or control your music that's going to your helmet. And once your phone is connected through Bluetooth, you control it with the buttons here on the switch gear. I think that's a super cool feature. I personally wouldn't want it on mine, and so I'm actually really glad that Triumph has made that an optional accessory. That also, of course, helps them reach the very competitive MSRP of $8,000. Some of you are gonna ask if you can disable the anti-lock brakes or the traction control, and the answer is, oh man, screen brightness? I should be doing this while stopped. So I'm not sure if I would do any touring or two up riding on this bike. I mean, I'm sure if you got a tail bag or maybe a windscreen, if you're somebody who likes those, then this would be good for the odd weekend trip. But I think this is mostly for joy rides and fun commutes. Maybe someday, years from now, when these things start getting cheap, somebody will pick one up to be their track bike. <laughs> if you ever do that, please come back here and let me know how it goes. I would love to see that. This is actually kind of a budget suspension they've got on here, which means it's either going to be comfortable or sporty, but not both. And it definitely leans more towards the sporty end. It's not terrible by any means, and a little bit of bumpiness is a small price to pay for something that's this, I don't know, this light on its feet. They put Michelin Road 5 tires on this motorcycle, which I love. That's one of my favorite tires. It's a dual compound tire. So in the center, you've got like a really hard rubber compound for longevity on the highway. And then just outside of that, you've got really good rain siping for wet conditions. And then on the outside is a more aggressive, soft, sporty compound for when you're really leaning this bike over. I put a pair of those on my Speed Twin, and it's also the stock tire on the Yamaha MT-07. Brakes are great. Not quite as bitey as, say, like a Brembo M50, but they definitely get the job done on a bike of this performance level. I really like this thing. Now that we're stuck in a little parade of traffic, I think I'll find a spot to pull over and give you guys a little walk around. All right, so we're stopped here on the side of Bear Creek, and I guess now is when we would talk about the looks. This is obviously a modern motorcycle design. Triumph is obviously famous for their modern classics, the Bonneville line, but they make modern bikes too, and this is definitely one of them. When the Trident was first announced, I was not into the looks, but the more I see it, the more it grows on me, especially here in person. I think before I was expecting it to look like a street triple or a speed triple, since they share some DNA, but I think Triumph decided to give the Trident its own unique design language, and it works. It was definitely smart of them not to be too outlandish with it, and I think, or at least I hope, that this motorcycle will age really well. I particularly love the tire hugger back here. That way you don't have to buy like a fender eliminator kit in order to get a clean looking tail like that. If it were my bike, I would probably remove the pillion foot pegs and their support arms altogether because I don't think I would carry a passenger on here. And I might try to have these things powder coated or I don't think there's anything wrong with the way it looks on its own, but compared to everything else on this bike, it just seems like a much less premium material. I'm also not entirely sure how I feel about the decal, although it looks like... I can't tell if this is a decal or if it's underneath the clear coat, and it's not my bike, so I'm not going to pick at it and find out. If I were able to remove that, I probably would. Maybe I would just leave the word triumph here, or maybe I would just get used to it. If it's under the clear coat, I would just have to. The owner of this bike opted for the Triumph bar end mirrors, and I think I would do the same thing. I'm a big fan of bar end mirrors. There are three colors available for this bike. Uh, this one's the silver, and then there's the white and the black. I genuinely don't know which one I would pick. I think they all look pretty good. Probably the silver, but <laughs> ask me again tomorrow, my answer might be different. Some people have complained about the clutch lever, saying they wish they could push it out farther. Uh, I haven't really had a problem with it so far, although it does seem kind of silly that this one is non-adjustable, but the brake lever is adjustable. You can see those triple exhaust headers coming out of those three cylinders, and that's a nice big radiator too. You are not going to get hot on this bike. So 
So I just got done shooting some B-roll with this bike. We're about to hop on and head back out and hopefully get a little bit of the engine sound on my microphone here. But I was flipping through the dashboard in this TFT display. There is a lot of stuff going on in that computer. Everything is completely configurable about your rider modes, traction control. It looked like ABS was not switchable, but other than that, you can customize just about everything, including what cards are in the display for you to flip through. And if you're connected to your phone through Bluetooth, you can choose what different functions of your phone show up on the display, like navigation, music, things like that. I didn't quite manage to pair my phone to it. It wants you to use like a Triumph app. I didn't really have time to figure it out, but it looks like they thought of just about everything in this display. So as I throw my leg over again, that reminds me to talk about the seat height. It's not super low, it's a little bit under 32 inches. I am 5 foot 9 with a 30 inch inseam and I find it totally manageable. It helps that it's a light bike, you know, a motorcycle is only as heavy as it is tall and vice versa. And I believe this thing's about 416 pounds wet, so a 32 inch seat height should be totally manageable as long as you can get your toes or the balls of your feet down. So I believe that's an MT-09 in front of us, which is another triple from Yamaha. A very well-liked bike, great reputation, and your instinct might be to try to compare it to this Trident, but it's actually in a completely different displacement class. That is a 900 with about 115 horsepower, whereas this is a 660 with about 80 horsepower. So yeah, while there are other triple cylinder naked sport bikes out there, this is kind of the only one in this displacement class, in the 650 class. All right, well, I don't have time to sit around behind some traffic with this guy. See you later, triple bro. It's time for me to go give this bike back to its owner, even though I kind of don't want to. I could ride this thing for quite a while and not get bored. So speaking of other triples and other 650s, let's talk about competition for this motorcycle. What other models will buyers be considering when they have the Trident 660 on their shopping list? And I'm going to focus on what I consider to be the two class leaders at this time, and that's the Yamaha MT-07 and the Honda CB650R. With the MT-07, you save a couple hundred bucks, it's a teeny bit lighter, you get a teeny bit more torque down low but it doesn't rev out nearly as high or build as much power on the top end. I'm gonna wait for these cars to go a bit. And with the MT-07, you also don't get traction control or really most of the electronic features on this bike. The CB650R obviously outclasses it in power, but the MSRP is also $1,000 higher. This is a fun motorcycle. This is really, really fun. So would I buy one? Um, probably, yeah. If I was in the market for something in the middleweight naked bike class, I don't think I'd buy it now because I don't see myself doing anything on this motorcycle that I don't already do on my Speed Twin. But man, my bike doesn't handle this well, I'll tell you that much. If I were shopping for like a commuter that you can have fun on, like I described earlier, then the MT-07 gets pretty tempting just because like it's a little bit more economical. The bike is cheaper, parts are cheaper. Uh, the, oh, thank you so much. Nice dog. And the complement of electronic rider aids might not be as useful if you're just going to and from work most of the time. But the Trident is such a good deal for what you're getting if you are considering an MT-07, it's worth at least checking this one out. You may just find that you love it enough that you're willing to spend a little bit more money to get it. Honestly, that goes for the entire class of middleweight nakeds. If you're considering buying that type of motorcycle, then you definitely owe it to yourself to check out the Triumph Trident 660. It might just be your favorite one. It does take premium, which can be a little bit of an annoyance, especially if you live in a remote or high altitude area. 
it can be a little bit less common to find at gas stations but I do like that the <laughs> gas cap is actually hinged on my bike I have to take it off and put it somewhere a few final thoughts that I've remembered now that I'm on my way back to return this bike to its owner. Uh, the seat comfort I think is pretty great. It's nice and wide and flat and supportive. I've been riding for a while and I am very, very comfortable. The foot pegs, you know, it's a somewhat sporty position, not as cramped as a super sport bike, but if you're a taller person, like over 6'2 or 6'3, uh, you might find yourself needing to stop and stretch your legs a little more often on this motorcycle. If you're new to my channel, uh, first of all, welcome and thank you very much for watching. Most of my videos are about my Speed Twin and the adventures that I have on it. But I am trying to branch out and get to ride more different types of motorcycles, both to expand my breadth of knowledge and perhaps attract a wider audience of people who are interested in different kinds of bikes. So, to the owner of this bike, thank you very much for letting me have this experience today. And if there's anybody else in the Missoula or Washington DC area who want to see your bike featured on my YouTube channel, please hit me up. If you want to see those videos when they happen, or if you enjoy the content I've already posted to my channel, then please consider subscribing. And if you like today's first ride video of the Triumph Trident 660, then make sure to hit that thumbs up button and maybe share it with a friend of yours who's considering buying one of these. What do you guys think of this bike? Would you buy one? Do you think it's the best choice in the 650 naked class? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, everybody ride safe and I'll see you back here for the next video. Thanks for watching.